<clears throat> well, <clears throat> I was just checking to see that the uh, 56 panels fit inside of the actual wall here, the surrounding wall of the uh, concrete. Uh, this is laying flat, so once it once it tilts up, there'll be plenty of clearance. Probably about the same as both sides. But the thing is, is these eight inch by eight inch pads that uh, connect the concrete to the three and a three inch pipe. We don't want any of that uh, tangled up with the mounting brackets, and we're good to go. So, where are we today? Ah, yes, concrete porn. Um. You can see right down here at the bottom, uh, there's a little place here about four foot by five. It's not perfectly finished. The rest of it looks pretty good. The thing is that this outside down here, outside of the bars, <clears throat> those slip forms sit down on the concrete. Um, when we did some work inside, we put some of that uh, uh, foil-faced... Uh, uh, like white foam insulation they use under ceilings. We put under that, that under to seal it. And the other reason was that uh, there was going to be something poured over top and it would have bound the forms and we couldn't have got them out without beating the crap out of them. I think I still have that foam. So if uh, when I go to do this, uh, I might just have them put uh, the half inch white foam and it just seal it up all together. Probably staple it onto the bottom of the form so it so would line up on the inside edge. Okay, noteworthy on this picture. You notice these rebars are all leaving shadows down here on the uh, right hand, lower right hand side. And you can tell uh, from the the way the shadows are pointing that it's late afternoon because uh, the sun rises on the uh, to the right over here. That's the east, and it sets over here on the west. These are these uh, shadows are not perfectly lined up with the rebars, but you got to remember that we got a uh, um, tilt of the earth, we got 11 and a half degrees front to back tilt that changes all year round. And it's only right, uh, summer solstice and, uh, uh, winter summer solstice. Yeah, it's solstice, not equinoxes. They're the other, the other two. Anyway, the, our, our, our south direction is plenty good if that's what it was actually year round. So we're all right on that. Um, and you see they started stacking bags in here because they're going to, uh, I think it looks like it. They're going to pour this, uh, this block over here. It's a long way to bring this, these bags down here. The, the, uh, rock and sand are on the opposite side of the house, a little off to the right, but on the opposite side. The front, uh, of the property is full of tandem dump truck loads of dirt. We tried to buy uh, topsoil. They delivered us uh, overburden from a quarry, and uh, we've never done anything with it. We're gonna we're gonna landscape the house and put that underneath of the whatever landscaping we do for drainage. It'd be all right for that, and it was cheap. It was really cheap. It was like uh, nine hundred pesos for uh, uh, twenty eight cubic meters each. Big piles, you know. And make our piles back here look like nothing. So what else we're we looking at here? Well, the water barrels, there's still water in this one. Got the hose next to it. This is probably our uh, our next location for pouring. Uh, and they'll be, they'll be putting water barrels, uh, you know, the extra, in case we need water for some reason for this one, they'll have barrels full. Uh, when they actually pour it, they may put a couple empty barrels where these bags are, because these bags are going to be part of that floor. And then you scoop it out with a five-gallon bucket, uh, 12 scoops to empty a barrel, and they'll dump it into an empty barrel right here, and then they can move that one because it doesn't weigh anything. won't be in the way that way. So. Oh, another thing here. You notice that uh, bedroom two... Bedroom four uh, has no sun shining on the uh, on the wall at all, and it didn't get any sunshine on it in the uh, the morning sun either. So this bedroom would be relatively cool. The overhangs are working good. Now this one here, uh, it's got sun on it, 
and uh, it got sunshine where the window is, so some of that light's going inside. However, you notice the difference in color between this skim coat and that skim coat. This in here is getting a, a lot of uh, almost direct radiation. It's uh, probably 30 degrees uh, uh, tilted from, from head on. This one here, is, it's got light shining on it, but it's much more diffused than you think because it's at a, at a pretty flat angle. The sun is shining the angle that these shadows are here down at the bottom. So uh, while this has sun on it, it's probably only getting about uh, maybe a third of the heat gain it would get if it was in you know head-on sun. Um, and of course, uh, over here, the uh, stairwell room, uh, it's getting some pretty direct sun. It's just a tree that's shading it, but uh, it, from where it is in the house, it gets direct sun. Upstairs here, you can see we only have this uh, this one panel here that's getting sun. And it, it would have got zero during the uh, morning hours, same as these here. And that's why this house is, isn't uh, hot. You have big overhangs, bigger overhangs at the top. <clears throat> You've got another roof up here over top of the main roof, top of the uh, spider beam. So you, uh, the direct sun down from the top is all being reflected back someplace. There's very little... Uh, uh, ceilings in a little part of the house that are exposed to actual sun on the other side. There's something above all of them. Next picture, please. Well, you got some water barrels filled up. Um, I'm not sure where they took those bags of stuff. They were there a minute ago. Mm, this is where this is the this is where we're at. There's that other bar water barrel. Huh. And again, here on the outside of the, the rebars, this didn't get finished worth the crap over here. We may have to chip that before we can put the foam down. But it's, it's usable. It's just, it'd be nice if they had troweled it. <clears throat> In their defense, it was 115 degrees Fahrenheit the day they poured that. And the fact that it's not loaded with big cracks is a miracle. Uh, by rights, it should, it should have a lot of cracks in it. But it's it's uh it's to keep grass from growing up under the solar array because if the grass catches fire in these brush fires, then uh, well bad things. Solar panels really don't like to be in 800 degree temperatures. These are probably some bags I didn't use on the uh, first pour. Um, there was some stacked over there. I remember that. And they're, they're, they're moving them from the other side of the house down to here, so uh, it's not too much to move them in there and use them. Trouble, we have got, we've got two guys that are, uh, well, they're not old, but uh, some of their joints are wore out, and we don't let them pick this heavy stuff up anymore. We have three other guys, and uh, one of them is he's only 80-some pounds. Um, what's that, 40, 42 kilos or something? Um and he uses a wheelbarrow. Put, get two guys, throw them in the wheelbarrow, and he rolls them down here. We just up and bought him a wheelbarrow. We have to have somebody move them, and, and he wasn't in any shape to do it because uh, the bag outweighed him. It, it, these bags are 120 pounds apiece. <clears throat> and this is a bottomless bucket over here. They drop that down in the bag, fill it up to the top of the bucket, lift the bucket up, fill it some more. Until they can fold the edges over. Um, if you laid this down on the ground and stepped on it, it would go about to the shape of a like like this one, like the shape of a uh, bag of concrete. And this one and that, and they've probably been laying down and picked them up again. And anyway, we're getting um, right at five uh, cubic foot of concrete per bag of cement, and uh, that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, that's for our, for a 44,200-pound uh, strength mix. Uh, at the water ratio we're using, we should be able to get that full strength. This is where the mix is set when they did that over here. Um, you can see the shadows under there. There's, And then we, we have the, um, we call biscuits. Uh, they'll either add biscuits, move biscuits around, or whatever, when they're pouring... These bars will be up there in the concrete. Um, when they're going to roll the mixer back and forth, they, they kick the biscuits out from under the rebars. 
because it's a lot easier to move that mixer if it's uh, not, you know, falling down into holes. They throwed some water around this. They, this may be the start of a pour. This is getting near the end of a pour. This, this, this is new concrete behind the uh, mixer over here. And they're pouring this block right in here right now. So this mixer is going to end up someplace else. Probably drive it straight ahead there um, when they get done with it. One, see, one, two, three, four. One. There's five guys. Nanny, Al, Benji. I think that's Boy. So Boy is probably taking the pictures. Usually, you you could get Carl or somebody like that to to take the pictures if they're if they're not done with something and they don't uh, or they or they want to be in the picture show who's doing what. Yeah, this here is uh, ready for finishing. Um, you'll notice that really close right behind the mixer, this is already uh, uh, had what we call water rise. You pour concrete. I don't care where you where in the world you pour it. You have um, uh, you pour it out and you run a bull float or a, a screed board or something over it just to get the the mountains out of it. But you can't do much with it at that point. But you just you try to get it spread out so it's about the right thickness. And uh, the bull float pushes the surface rocks down, uh, so that you uh, or you can roll a pipe across like a six inch pipe is what I used a lot. <clears throat> and I also had a power screed that had two boat trailer winches on the end and an uh, an out of balance uh, shaft in the middle that shook the thing, and it turned in a direction that hopped it forward, so it. Uh, it pushed the, the, the concrete ahead of it and left it really flat. Did a great job. It was uh, made out of aluminum truss. Well, the middle piece was. That was store-bought. I made the outside pieces. First job I took it to was 8 feet too short. So I spent the morning making it 12 feet wider. It worked just fine. Uh, it was always left on whatever whatever job we did last with it. we just find a place in the weeds and, and park it there. We never did haul it back to the shop. Nobody ever stole it. Never even stole the motor off of it. <clears throat> but for 12 or 15 years, it sat outside all the time. And we used it anytime we wanted to. Start right up. Okay, so they got that little bit there to pour. And then they're going to do some finishing. Oh, <clears throat> so after you get your rocks pushed down, sort of like this over here, as they've done it with a hand trowel, it looks like. The water comes to the surface. And... Uh, <clears throat> That's telling you that it won't be but a few minutes that water's going to disappear. It's going to sink right back into the concrete. It doesn't evaporate. It goes, it's called waterfall. It goes right back in. And then you're on the clock. You either finish it or it'll be looking like that the next day. Next day, you can take a, a house brick like a, with three holes in it and rub this and, and polish the crap out of it. But you hate to have to do that. At least a little bit of an open surface. If you're putting seal on it, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're not putting seal on it, then... Your concrete is more open to the elements. Water can get down in that surface and you can do some winter damage. Well, he's not supposed to be carrying bags. He's one of the two that's not supposed to carry bags. But there he is one. Caught him in the act. And they're over by the uh, septic tank with no lid. This is the air vent holes. They're on both ends. And there's about a nine inch space between this and the and the lid for air circulation. And it's these walls are different heights to direct the air so that it, go, it goes in where we want it to and out where we want it to. You got enough air in your septic tank, it doesn't smell and it doesn't build up with solids. The enzymes in the bottom take care of it and it's it's the true septic tank. It's just not a, a cesspool pit. Okay, well, this is just taking few minutes after what we looked at before. They're working this way. This concrete over here is probably hard enough. If he wanted to, when he gets that poured, he can just roll that right back on the concrete. It's not heavy enough to damage it. He'll probably roll it over here on this other side, but he could just roll it back here or, or roll it back there and out the door again because it's already getting too hard to finish back there. 
115 degrees is way too hot to pour concrete. And it's windy on this site. Makes it even worse. Okay, so they've uh, finished that up. Uh, we have a little bit of water rise going on right here. Or just hasn't failed yet, probably. There's Al with his wheelbarrow. Benny's took off his hat. You know it's hot if that if that hat's got up sitting up here. These guys are getting a serious tan working outside. <laughs> we work out that in every day. That that Philippine sun. Oh yeah, the mixer went forward, so they just pulled it right off over the, over that uh, end plate board and set it over here. That's where I ought to put it too. It's ready for next time. Well, I'll move it any more than you have to. That's Nan, eh? Something to him in the back of the head. And uh, these are uh, magnesium uh, floats. We buy either uh, Goldblatt or Marshallton. Uh, I have no preference. I my own's a Goldblatt, but I'll buy either one of them. I think they're both you know really good trials. And and these trials go back to 2014. As long as you wash them up, I. I the edges will round off a little bit over time, but they still work all right. My, my. Well, you can see there's footprints in it, so it's not quite hard yet. Maybe they'll come back and work on that some. If not, we have self-leveling compound. Or I might just give them the diamond cup. We'll let them spend about a day and a half or two days out there in the sun with all that dust, wearing a hot-ass respirator, and uh, knock the, the stones off. And then we can... Uh, you go to a place that has uh, the tiles returned that are broken, and they're about 20 cents on the dollar. And you can cut them diagonal and make triangles. <laughs> and uh, that makes them uh, 40 cents on the dollar for, for the for the width of the... Uh, of the original tile, you know, because it takes two to make it. And our, this is in the shade underneath the solar panels. I have no uh, no desire to make it uh, beautiful tiles all all the same shade or some kind of geometric pattern or whatever. All it needs waterproof. Um, probably something towards white. Okay, so we're going to end it up here. Um, this was yesterday. So tonight they're uh, it's day for them, night for us. Uh, tonight they'll uh, fill bags up for uh, the one down here, um, down past the, the water barrels. Yeah, the, uh, the ones that's designated poor number two, they went from one to four, so they're going to go one, four, two, and then uh, huh. Five, I guess. We'll see. Okay. That's rude for the Ukrainians. They seem to be getting up some speed now. Uh, and then, you know, say a prayer for the people with COVID, which is still with us. It's, you know, it's different variants. Which is, it's a shame. I don't know. Keeping us from going back right now. Okay, we're going to pause this and end it.